They have a big, almost Western style heart buckle, you know, really. This one's very simple, but for the dollar, I figured I could flip this. Whoops. For the dollar, I figured I could fit this. For the dollar, I figured I could flip this for at least $20. There, we got that out. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Karen, Lavender Clothesline, and today I have a haul video. It is going to be a mix of everything together. So not straight hard goods, not clothing, not just everything. I just was all over the place this week and figured I would just lay out everything I found and we'd go through it together. I do have some areas where I will group like things together to tell you why I pick up those things. They may not be what everybody picks up, but sometimes I get in the mode of picking up a certain type of item, whether it's leather goods, ceramics, things like that. And I figured we might do part of this haul in groups of things or types of things. I'm not quite sure how to say that. Not, not really genres, but you'll see what I mean as we go along. As always, thank you for following me. Uh, please like and hit the subscribe button. I'm really trying to build my channel and get to that 10,000 follower mark. So if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Also hit the bell notification so that you know when I post a video. I was filming probably once or twice a week and I've upped that a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can keep up with that schedule. But let's get started and hope everybody's having a great day and here we go. So the first item I want to talk about is children's clothing or shoes. I don't pick up a lot of children's clothing. I'm not really into children's clothing. My kids are grown. I do know there are certain brands you can make a decent amount of profit on. But for me, I find the profit in children's clothing not as high as the profit in adult clothing. So that's just my thinking. But when I see something, I grab it. I don't really go into the children's department but I do grab something if it comes across my path. So the first item I wanna talk about is Sorel Boots for children. And I paid, I took the sticker off already. I think I paid $5.97 for these. These are in great condition. They're little winter boots with the pile lining. And Sorel is a great brand. It always brings attention and you know me, I'm all about buying items that will have the attention. Because to me, if enough people visit the item and watch the item, it sells at a quicker rate. So the first item, Sorel boots. I don't even know what size these are. I'm gonna to have to take a peek inside. But um, yeah, so that's our first item today. And I'm not sure what this will bring. I'll have to check and put that on the screen. So sticking with the shoe department, shoe, topic i picked up these sneakers now i don't know this brand i didn't recognize the brand i picked these up solely on the color and the condition so this brand is actually called hoka hoka one h-o-k-a-o-n-e spelled out this is what this shoe looks like this brings a decent profit from what i could tell i looked at salts quickly I did pay up for these. I believe I paid $6.97, so $7. And I'm hoping for the $30 mark on these. So we shall see. This is the first time I'm picking up this brand, but I thought the colorway was really good. And um, if they were my size, I'd be trying them on. You know me, I try a lot of stuff on, but keep very little. So yes, to Hoka One. I'm not even quite sure if I'm saying that correctly. Let's see, the next item I wanna talk about is linens. You guys, if you've been following my channel and my Instagram, you know I love picking up linens. Some of the linens that really catch my attention are the ones that have a lot of color to them. I feel color is a great way to liven up a room and people look for very vibrant colored linens. So the first item that I have is actually a handmade baby blanket. Quite a few baby blankets came out on one of the clothing racks Normally, baby blankets I don't do a lot of, but out of the five that came out, and I believe they were all made by the same um, crafter, this one was in the pile, and I chose this one. The reason I chose this was strictly for the workmanship was very good, very even stitches, nice tight stitches, no loose weave to it, very consistent stitches, and I felt this little Afghan throw, I believe this is, this is crochet, 
was like mermaid colors. And it came to my mind that I would be able to use mermaid colors in the keywords for this little baby Afghan. So that's my plan. I paid $2.50. And because it's handmade, I'm gonna put this on close to the $30 mark. Like I said, I don't pick up a lot of baby blankets, but absolutely yes to this one. Okay, staying with the blanket theme or the blanket group, this is a little throw blanket or a crib blanket. I'll probably put crib blanket in my keywords. This is a handmade, beautiful, patchwork crazy quilt you can call it little little quilt here so it's a square shape which leads me to believe it's more of a wall hanging or a decorative throw rather than something for a bed or a crib most crib quilts in my opinion will be rectangle it'll follow the shape of the bed but i still will use crib baby all of those keywords in my title along with wall hanging a handmade quilt now I'm here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is so abundant in that craft or skill. So when I come across these, I take a quick look at it to make sure it is handmade. There's so many quilts being produced and manufactured to, um, to emulate or to resemble a handmade quilt. You can usually look at the stitching and see that it's hand done. After a while, you'll be able to tell. So I found this quilt. I thought this was phenomenal, just beautiful. I paid $2.50, yep, $2.50. And I have to research on this. I'm probably gonna put this at $75 to $80 because it's all handmade. This took hours of clipping each individual little square. So yes to handmade quilts, almost always. All right, what shall we talk about next? I think I'm gonna go right to this little lunchbox, which got a lot of attention on Instagram. I found this in the bins. Everybody was digging. This was in a bin that so many people had overlooked. I always look at lunchboxes. If a lunchbox is vintage, some of them are plentiful, but there's a better chance that it'll be collectible than maybe something more, you know, just from Target or Walmart. So this is Toxic Crusaders. And I do have to say right off the bat that the sticker that was put on the front of this lunchbox is offset. It was put on wrong. That's going to decrease in the value of this. I didn't realize it right in the beginning. I was so happy to find this. Recent solds are up to $110 for the same exact one. I do have the thermos inside and it's in fairly good shape. A little schmutzy, I'll have to wash it really well. But I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do about this sticker. Most likely, this will have to stay right where it is. If I was able to gently peel this off and do a really good job of gluing on and have no telltale signs, I would go ahead and do that, still disclosing that this has been re-glued. But in this case, this sticker won't come off without it being damaged. So I will leave it where it is and sell as is. Like I said, I bought this in the bins and I'm gonna say this probably weighs around a pound. So I paid, I believe $1.59 and I'm hoping, I'm gonna see what this will bring. I'll probably throw it on auction for something like this, but I'm hoping for around the $80 mark, even with the offset sticker paper design. The next item or group of things that I wanna talk about are figurines, statues, ceramics. I have a tendency to pick up a lot of that. Even when the item is not put out by a brand that's high end, I go by, you know me, the quality of the figurine or statue, what condition it's in, and the interest, the amount of collectors that would look for this type of thing. So one of the statues or um, figurines that I gravitate towards is religious, faith, biblical figurines. Now, of course, this is Jesus, and he has, he's holding a lamb and has the shepherd's staff and is just beautiful. Beautifully painted, two little lambs. If you really look at the detail in this, it's gorgeous. This is mass produced. It's not made by an artist. It's not a single figurine. If it was, this would be worth great money, I'm convinced. This is put out by the Danbury Mint, which the Danbury Mint, in my opinion, doesn't bring a high dollar value. I have not looked this up. I paid $4.97, so $5 for this. 
but I feel that unless the market is saturated with these, I feel this will bring good money. I'm gonna guess off the top of my head, I'm just putting it out there. I'm gonna guess 30 to $40. But let me just say, I haven't looked at comps. If there are 300 of these things online, then, you know, then there's that. But um, this is a gorgeous statue and I wouldn't mind holding on to it for a while. I'm not really a statue collector. I don't have a lot of tchotchkes and things around my house, my personal stuff. I do have a lot of my store stuff that I decorate the house with until it sells. But you can see why this would catch attention. So always, yes, uh, the face of Jesus is just beautiful. And like I said, very well done, Danbury Mint. And I'll try to look this up and put on the screen what this will bring. Okay, staying with figures and statues and those type of things, figurines, I picked up these doves. I think they're doves. Is that a dove? That looks like a dove. If they're winged doves. Now the material is either a ceramic or a chalkware. These are molds that I pick up once in a while. Somebody actually um, bought the mold and then painted them. They're just painted in a white pearlized it's not iridescent. I'm going to say pearlized finish. I have to clean them. They're not cleaned and they're quite dirty. I believe these are vintage. I picked this up solely on the aesthetic. That's the only thing that made me buy this. I don't know that this mold, I can't even really read which mold. It's not Atlantic. I'll have to use a magnifying glass and see which mold this is. But I thought these are good. I'm picking these up. I paid $3 a piece, so $6 for the pair. And yeah, I'm convinced I'll sell these. I will put them in my china cabinet in the back, the break front in back of me. But yes to beautiful birds that are very well done. So I picked these up. Not quite sure what these will bring. I'm gonna guess around the $50 mark. So I got inquisitive. I shut off my camera. I quickly checked the statue. Two have sold. The market is not saturated. Uh, one sold for $50 and the other one was listed for $95 and a best offer was accepted. So that's a great find. And like I said, I solely went on the aesthetic. So sometimes trusting your judgment, trusting your eye is worth it. When you're sourcing and buying as much as I am, there's no way I'm able to look up every single item. Some days I come home with hundreds of items. So if I took the time to look up hundreds of items or even say half of it I wasn't quite sure about, my time would be greatly increased. If I'm buying at a low price point, sometimes I do take a chance. If I'm paying between say four and seven dollars for a statue like this and I don't have time to look it up, I go ahead and take the chance. That's my business model. I have the capital to invest, and I'm convinced that I can sell this for more than five to seven dollars. I'm convinced I can get at least 20. So as long as the statue is in very good condition, I always put this in my cart and say yes. So yay for beautiful Jesus statues that will bring a good profit and somebody will enjoy. Okay, we are making progress. The next item that I wanna talk about is the leather good category. Good leather is always something that you wanna spend time getting to know. <clears throat> if an item is made with high quality leather, most likely the item will be very resellable and bring a good profit. So with saying that, I look at leather handbags, almost always vintage, shoes, I don't do a lot of leather jackets. The jackets that I do gravitate towards are moto jackets with fringe, Indiana Jones type bomber jackets, and that's probably about it for jackets. I don't pick up leather jackets because of the weight and because it's just not the thing, in my opinion, at this point for in fashion for a lot of leather jackets. Now, of course, there's exceptions to that. But back in, what was it, the 90s? Everybody was wearing leather jackets and everybody wanted them. Wilson's couldn't keep them in stock. Now I don't see leather jackets moving as quickly. Uh, you know, the regular leather jacket. Of course, high-end names will always be a different story. But so those are the two types I pick up. Bomber, 
and the motorcycle jackets, if, especially if it has a Harley Davidson, you know, patchwork, applique, stitching, absolutely yes. Or ones with a lot of fringe, you know, the ones with the fringe off the arms. I'll, I'll go ahead and pick up those. So of course I digress. Let's get back to shoes and handbags. Whoops. One of my favorite all-time brands to sell is Allen Edmonds. Allen Edmond makes beautiful quality shoes. Right away, I can tell an Allen Edmond shoe by the look of the leather. Forgive these, I haven't dusted them out yet, but I found these. This is a leather moccasin or loafer. It has a braided trim along the top, the tassel, the insert on the top of, on the instep of the shoe has the braided trim. This is just a gorgeous shoe. The bottoms are leather. Allen Edmond shoes, especially the wingtips made out of the Shell Cordovan leather, are very highly sought after. Shell Cordovan leather is a leather made from horse hide. So the leather is very durable. It doesn't crease easily. So even when a pair of Allen Edmond shoes made with the Shell Cordovan are well worn, you don't see a lot of the wear. They're a very longevity shoe. If you look on a lot of shoes, leather shoes, as the man wears it, it'll create toe creases. Shell Cordovan shoes do not crease easily. These are not Shell Cordovan. I wish they were because those can bring two and three hundred dollars for used pre-owned shoes. But still, Allen Edmonds, always a wonderful shoe to pick up. I once said in a video, and I want to encourage it again, if you're ever in a high-end mall where they have a retail Allen Edmonds, go in, take five minutes, and look at the shoes. Stunningly beautiful shoes. So always yes to Allen Edmonds leather shoes. Uh, I'm sorry, did I say I paid $7.97 for these? And I haven't looked up the loafers. I'm going to guess around $60 to $70. These are in great shape. Okay, staying with leather, you guys know I love to pick up belts. This one is not a phenomenally great belt. This is Brighton, and it has a little charm, a little flower charm. I don't pick up a lot of Brighton belts unless I get them at a very low price point. This one I got for a dollar. It's a woman's belt, black leather. Brighton does put out a nice quality belt. The highly embellished ones are more sought after if they have a big almost Western style, heart buckle, you know, really. This one's very simple. For the dollar, I figured I could flip this for at least $20. There. So these came out and I grabbed them. These are Dooney and Burke vintage bags. I don't know a lot about Dooney and Burke. I know people collect Dooney and Burke, so I said yes to these. They're in very good shape. I have no idea what these will bring. I paid $5 a bag, and that's all I gotta say about this. It's Dooney and Burke does move, so that's why I pick it up. I don't pick up a lot of handbags these days because I feel like there are so many fakes that I have a tendency not to want to deal with the whole Vero, this was fake, this isn't real. I don't have time for that. But when I see vintage Dooney and Burks and I can take a quick look at the stitching and the quality and know that it's genuine Dooney and Burke, absolutely yes. Off the top of my head, I'm hoping for $30, $35. If it's not quite as much, still worth the $5 investment. So yes to vintage, not sure what year these are, but I believe these are vintage Junie and Burks. They're the classic styles. And I'm sure you guys are much more knowledgeable about these and you'll leave a comment down below if you know the style name or anything more about these. So, um, so good find. Okay, so that finishes uh, leather that I have out on the table. The next item are metal items, or the next grouping are metal items. So today I have this plaque of Mary and Jesus as a young child. It just hangs on the wall. Solid brass, there are no markings on it, but I paid $1.97 for it, so yes to this. And this bank, this is the Belleville Foundry. Does that say Sperry New Holland? I'm not even quite sure what that says, New Holland. Um, cast 1976. This is a bank. Still has a coin in there, I'll have to fish out. But uh, both of these items are solid brass. I don't pick up everything solid brass. 
The items that are very obvious, they are from India. They have more of a souvenir look to them, if you will. I have a tendency not to pick those up. But items that have a graphic or a, um, a theme that would bring the followers, that would bring the watchers, yes. So that would be religious um, themes, Americana, patriotic, um, primitive is, I always gravitate towards anything that you could be called primitive. So there's the brass items. I have not looked up if this bank is genuine or if this is a reproduction. Recently I found a pig bank. I'll try to insert that photo. And uh, I thought it was a reproduction, but pigs are so darn cute. Everybody loves a good pig. And I picked that bank up and I was pleasantly surprised to find out that was genuine uh, from the 1930s. And that sold, I believe it brought 50, 55 dollars off the top of my head. So really great find with that. So yes to solid brass, um, iron, metal, but especially solid brass. Next item I want to talk about is glassware. When I started selling hard goods, I was picking up a lot of glassware. Now I did sell it. It wasn't a mistake, but glassware to me is one of the things that I most don't want to ship. Does that make sense? Glassware is like, oh, glassware. But if it is something quite different that catches my attention, I'll say, okay, I'll ship that. So this is a picture and it has like, I don't know what this is called. I've never seen this before. It has a texture. It seems like this has been applied on top of the smooth picture because it's still smooth inside. I believe this is vintage. And the thing I liked about it was it has a painting of a cardinal on this side and a bluebird on this side. So this picture would appeal to people that collect vintage glass, uh, bird lovers, and I thought it was just really sweet. So I paid, I believe I paid $4 for this, $3.97 or $4. And yeah, I thought this was really good and I'll go ahead and ship glass. Again, I have not run a comp. I solely went on that the birds are in great shape. This is a transfer wear. This was not hand painted, so it was applied. Transfer wear is like a decal. It's applied, it's, a, it's an applied uh, painted graphic, if I'm saying that okay. So yes to pictures with pretty birds on them. The next item I wanna talk about are handbags. Okay, didn't I just say I don't pick up handbags? Okay, so I lied. This handbag is Lily Bloom. Not a real high profit, but Lily Bloom bags are really pretty. So bags that look like this with this fun print pop of color, Sack Roots also puts out bags that look like this. There's another name, I'm trying to remember what it is. I'll put it on the screen if I think of it have this type of print on a bag. So this was really clean. I paid $5 for it, pretty pink inside. Canvas handles with leather, uh, Lily Bloom. I'm not even sure where Lily Bloom is sold. It could be a Target or that type, I'll have to look it up. But for $5, I said yes to this. I especially gravitate towards an item or a brand that I don't know when the hardware is marked. So this has its zipper tab marked, it has another pull tab here. The name is here on a metal plate. When an item is very heavily branded, sometimes the actual brass hardware or the metal hardware is branded. To me, that shows more pride in workmanship and I have a tendency to give it a second glance. So yes to Lily Bloom handbags. All right, I have stopped the camera like 10 times today. <laughs> I am bound and determined to get this video made. My speech is not there today, I think because it's Sunday morning and I'm a little bit in that relaxed mode, but I'm going to keep on going and get this video out for you guys because I love to show you what I find and your comments are always so great. So like I said, if you haven't um, hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now and I will wait. Okay, did you hit it? Great. Thanks so much. All right, so the next item that I'm going to talk about are, you guys know I love to pick up different art um, tools, art media, different things. A lot of what I pick up is vintage, and I can tell that usually by the packaging. So I will pick up vintage pencils, paint brushes, uh, what else have I picked up? I'm trying to think artist-wise. I think that's about it. I mean, of course I pick up paintings, also the finished product, but I like the different media. I think it's called a medium. 
I'm not even quite sure what the correct term is there, but yes to that. So this is two packages of pastels. Now, this one is called Weber Costello brand, and this is 24 square pastels. The foam is still there. They look like they might have been used a little bit, but they're still in very good condition, and the majority of the product is there. If these were like all little cracked pieces and stubs of pieces, no. But this, I picked up this one, and that thrift store actually packaged these together. I was just looking to see if that was a date. That says $7 and something, the original price. I'm gonna have to research what date this is from. And this one is put out by Coase, K-O-S-S, Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles. Well, <laughs> can't get that out. And again, they're in great shape. I paid $3 for the two of them. I'm expecting each box to bring probably 20 and I'll probably put 35 on the two together. I think I'm gonna put them together and sell them. I'm not sure about that yet. I really have to take a look at what they bring, but that's off the top of my head what I'm gonna do, which, you know, made it'll always change. So I'm just making it up as I go along. A lot of you are so kind in thinking that I have a lot of knowledge and I'm an expert in a lot of fields. I really have very little knowledge at all. The thing I have going for me, I think, if this doesn't sound too boastful, is that I'm all in. I'm willing to try anything. So to stand there and say, oh, do pastels sell or whatever, I do run a quick comp to see if it's a sought after item. But then once I do that one time, I go ahead and pick these up. Because again, if you're only paying a couple of dollars, say I even got $25 for the two, still a great profit. So yes to an item that is vintage and might not be, there might not be a lot of this around. I just really have no speech pattern today. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I appreciate it. So see, I'm not an expert, but um, okay, let's get on to the next. The next item, the next item is this crazy True Balance travel puzzle. So the thing that attracted me, because I knew nothing, it's in package, it's this wooden travel, I don't even know what you're supposed to do with this. I don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. Something like this, I run a comp. These are bringing about $20 to $25. I said yes, because I got this for $2. So absolutely, and Christmas is coming, so there's always that. The next item I found in the bins, this is old stock, new in box. This has not been opened. When you find a keyboard in box, always try to gently open the box, even if you think it's new, and examine that it's the keyboard that is represented on the box. You don't want to get home and find out, or list it even worse, and find out that it's the keyboard the person was throwing away and they kept the new keyboard. So this one is Microsoft Natural Keyboard. And thrilled with this find. I did pay up even in the bins. They priced this separately. I was um, charged $6 for this, but again, I felt this was worth it. I don't remember the comps. I did look this one up. Something like a keyboard I'm looking up because keyboards are saturated. There are so many of them. I mean, there's thousands of keyboards online. So when it's something that's older and it's not made anymore, I go ahead and look it up. Truthfully, guys, I can't remember what this one is. I'm trying to remember 50, maybe 50. I'm gonna guess at that. So again, I'll look it up and try to get it on the screen. If I don't, you guys look it up and let me know how much I'm gonna get for this. All right, we are whittling down, we are getting there. I am hoping to be done in a few minutes because Elise is coming over and we're gonna go for a walk on this beautiful day. Finally, the humidity has broken, so I'd love to walk. Um, okay, so this next thing is Brother P-Touch 2430. So it's a, it's a label maker. I almost didn't pick this up. It's unopened, new in box. Again, I will take a peek inside, make sure it's in there, and it's the new one. Uh, but I figured for what I paid for it, let me think about this. I paid $4 for this. So I figured, yeah, somebody's gonna want a P touch. And I think I did run the comps with the um, with this model number. Cause sometimes you might run the brand name and say, oh, these are great. 
and then you run yours and it's not as highly sought after. So that's my tip. When you find something like this new in box, always run the model number along with the brand to make sure the one that you have is the one that's bringing a good profit. Next item are children's curtains. This is a valance or two valances, John Deere fabric. I always look at uh, John Deere tractors, things like that. And this one is put out by the John Deere store. So I got two, I paid $2.50. I'm gonna guess $25 for the two. They're in great shape. Linens, I always make sure that they don't have stains, rips, all of those kind of things. Unless something is gorgeously made and I'm gonna put the handwork into repairing or de-staining, that type of item, like I've said before, always has to be a high profit item. I'm not sitting there and sewing something that's gonna bring you know, a $10 profit. Who has that kind of time these days? John Deere is super cute. I thought this was great, two balances, and um, yeah, so always yes. Not, not a lot of time spent on this item. The next item are chains, gold chains, that I found in the bins. I grabbed a, it was a little case that had the individual compartments for jewelry making, but right away my eye thought, okay, if this is gold, take it out of the case, just grab the chains that could be gold, because this weighs probably an ounce or two, and if I'm paying $1.59 a pound, gold, this would cost me 10, 20 cents. So I did go ahead and pick up three chains and looked at them at home. Because if it costs 20 or 30 cents and it turns out to be nothing, I have the choice of either listing it or throwing it out. The great thing is three little chains, one is 14 karat gold. So I'm not sure what it weighs. I'll probably put it to the side and uh, it has a little cross on it and save up what gold I find. One is Avon. And the other is just, I think, a no name. Uh, I think it says made in Korea. So that's my gold thing. If it's little lightweight chains and you're gonna pay basically nothing, I don't stand there in the store and try to figure out if it's gold or not. I just throw it in my cart and yeah, take it home. Okay, so this next item is a vintage socket set, wrench set, tools. All those things, I had no idea. I think, I think I knew it was a socket set if I thought about it. R.H. Williams is the maker. And absolutely, I didn't even open this up. I saw the outside metal case. Let me put it down now before I drop it. It's so heavy. This thing must weigh 40 pounds. Okay, maybe not 40, but it's very heavy. Let me see if I can slide the table back so you guys can see. Okay, so this is a socket set and it's got other things in it, a T something or another. It's got this big wiggly thing. I do, I do do some home repairs. I have replaced a few things. I've, I've replaced a toilet or, or taken the toilet off, replaced the floor and put the toilet back on, put a new ring. So I am a little handy. I do paint a lot. What else have I actually fixed? Um, I don't do plumbing. Yeah, okay, so I really haven't done that many home repairs that need big tools. I have built a pantry with a power saw. That was very exciting to me. Anyway, I digress. Tools I don't know a lot about. Look at this little set inside the set. Can you guys see that? How cute is that? So anyway, so I saw this. I paid a couple of dollars for it, threw it in my cart, got home, or even comped it probably in the car thrilled to find out these bring very good money. So um, it is quite heavy. The buyer's going to have to pay shipping. I will also offer a local pickup. And yeah, I really think the profit is going to be phenomenal on this. I will be sure to report back on my Instagram what this set brings. So I paid, I'm going to have to look back, pretty sure I paid three dollars for it or four, three to four dollars for this. And just in amazing condition. So very happy with this find. I don't know a lot about tools and who cares? It's great, I'm throwing it in my cart. I don't have to be an expert. Yep, I went out and got what's mine. Okay, so the last item I wanna talk about are musical instruments and equipment. Once again, sorry guys, I know nothing about this topic, nothing. I mean really, really not knowledgeable, but I feel like my eye has learned quality. 
So when I look at something like this, I try to judge the quality. Now, let me just say that I really haven't been looking at musical instruments too long. It's only been this past year that I've realized there's such capability of making profit. So what I do is when I see an instrument, the first thing I look at is the condition. Both these guitars are missing a string, but in my opinion, that's not a big deal. I do look at the, I don't even know what this is called, fretboard maybe? I, you guys are probably hysterical laughing at me right now. I look to make sure the keys are there and that there is no major damage to the body of the instrument. So with having said that, I found this guitar. This is, I guess it's considered P-E-A-V-E-Y, Pevy. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but I paid $10 for it, which you can see the sticker residue. I don't know why this thrift store put stickers right on the instrument. I will very carefully um, clean the instrument. It's an electric guitar, and that's all I know. I think it's electric, isn't it? It is. I think there's a place for it to plug in. Oh, yes, because if it has knobs, it's electric, right? <laughs> Melissa's husband, Barry, is probably rolling his eyes if he watches this, but I'm really grateful that he has vast guitar knowledge. So whatever questions I need answered about this, I will be sure to text him. So um, Bear, hang on. I'm probably gonna be calling you or texting you about these instruments to find out what I have here. So I did pick up this guitar, I paid $10. I'm not sure if I said that. And this is what it looks like. Well, you can see my ring light. Where'd it go? There it is. So $10 I paid for this. I'm hoping for 80, that's, well, I got, I looked at comps quickly for the name and it seemed like these sell fairly decently. So that's why I said yes to this. I'm gonna go ahead and set this one down. This next acoustic guitar is the second one that I picked up. I picked one up last week and I'm selling that one locally. I made very good profit on that one. And this one is put out by Epiphone, Epiphone. I don't know how to say that. I'm gonna say Epiphone. Um, yeah, it's an acoustic guitar. It's got the model number on a sticker inside, which is great. Thank goodness for stickers. And it's missing a string. I'm just looking at this little fretboard. I think we're good. Or whatever this, this string thing is called. So, so I'll just stop there because I have no idea what these are. They're guitars, that's all I got. And I paid, I actually paid up for this one. I paid $24 and change for this one has a very pretty sound. And lastly, I picked up this amplifier. It's just a little amp. I paid $10 for this. That might have been too high for this, but if so, I will just try to flip it for 20 to 25 and uh, just make a few dollars profit. But when I'm learning a category, I'm not as concerned with the profit in the beginning. So because I'm gaining knowledge and a way for me to gain knowledge very quickly is to pick up a few items and research what I have and start to learn about it. I'm not really looking to make that $100 profit, $200 profit. I mean, if that happens, that's great. But the way that I flip, the way that I learn is when I start down a path of a certain type of item, musical instruments or whatever it may be, I pick up, I go solely by quality, what it looks like, the feel of the item, bring it home, and then the research starts. So in my six years of selling, I can't remember once where I took a loss, which is just amazing to me because, like I said, a lot of these items I don't know a lot about. So just my encouragement to you guys, don't be afraid to learn. This is our business. If you went to college, if you went to trade school, if you went to specialized class, you'd be paying. So to me, that learning, that research, that knowledge that I gain, invaluable because then from there on out, I will be building my knowledge and be able to make profit on what I have learned. So I think that's everything for today. I hope you guys liked this haul. Please forgive the scatteredness of it. Like I said, it's Sunday morning and um, I'm kind of in relax mode and just drinking coffee and gonna go for a walk. But I wanted to jump on here uh, quick to show you guys what I found before I get into cleaning and listing all of this great stuff. And as always, I appreciate all of you following me and feel free to leave comments down below if you know anything about any of the items that I don't. I always love to hear um, what you have to say about it. And uh, one more time, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for following and for watching and go out and get what's yours. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.